Okay, yeah, because I can't do a long show anyway, because my girl's coming to do my nails, right, and Eva. bitches don't even shave me. <laughs> Nick and Kim cannot finish this Yeah, show. bitch, we are. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Jimmy Vibes here, and we're back for another episode of the Pipe Bomb Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to talk about SummerSlam, NXT TakeOver, Nikki Bella's comeback, Bailey's debut on Monday Night Raw, Charlotte capturing the Women's Championship for the second time, Carmella's heel turn on SmackDown, and the new championships, and Talking Smack. So stay tuned, we have so much more to talk about, and I'm going to pass it over to Nick now. Oh, hey everybody, welcome back to another special episode of the Pipe On Podcast. All three of us are here, James, myself, and the beautiful Sam Pelly, the brand. The brand. Um, yeah, I am so excited to talk about all these hot topics, like James just mentioned. Um, this week in wrestling has been lit, so I'm really excited um, and I kind of want to just kick things off um, with kind of uh, like our top three matches from each of the shows. Because, you know, listeners, you guys watched it. This is Thursday. You know, we've gone through all the week. There's been so much hot topics. So we just want to get into everything. So let's talk with our top three matches. So I'll start with um, Samuel. Nick, you spoke so fast then. I know. I've never heard Nick speak so quickly. <laughs> it's because he's getting his nails done, the big homo. I guess that's Nick. <laughs> that's Nick Listen being tight. Listen here, you little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what are we doing? Top three matches? Yeah, what's yeah, your first? Top three matches. Yeah. My, my top match. The number three. Yeah, we're going oh, to do three TakeOver first. Oh, no, we're not even combined. I th- yeah, no, no, bitch. All There's, right. There were so many matches. All right. Takeover for takeover. Let's see, Sam. What's your number? Um, three? Number three, Bobby Roode. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like Bobby Roode's baby. It was good. Yeah, I love his entrance. That was actually the first time I seen Bobby Roode because I've been away with like vacation and stuff, so I didn't get to see his whole kind of gimmick building up to it. Um, but it was. I like his theme song, the like, glorious. It's like perfect, but I don't really like the finisher. I hate Go the on. finisher. It's so ineffective. It um, looks like, I feel like that should transition into a signature form. Yeah. Um, but. Number two, Number sir? two would be Ember Moon's debut. Even though, like, I, I felt personally Billy Kay was very stiff in the ring and it didn't work well, but it was nice to actually finally see a debut. Oh, go on with that. Um, what do you mean go on with it? Like, how I felt about it? Yeah, why? Yeah, how, what, do you, what do you mean Billy Kay just, being stiff in the ring? I just felt like it didn't work. She didn't seem okay. right. Like, me and Brandy were talking about it earlier in the week, like, just between, like, me and her. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, it, it, she just seemed really sloppy in the ex, like, the... Sloppy? Like, I felt like she was sloppy in the ex, like, oh. execution of the moves. And, like, the screaming during the match and things like that. And I really hate her attire as well. Wow. <gasps> and it just seemed, the beginning of it seemed very botched. Wow. Just watch it back, and you'll understand like where I'm coming from. Like, I've obviously, we were all excited for Ember to come in. All right, what? Sam, I've watched this match twice, and I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I mean, no, me too. <laughs> right, where's Brandy, Manny? Yeah, because me and her are discussing this, really? and we're both from the same way. Okay, all right, talk about so like give details with this. What do you mean, um, botching this in the front? Like, oh, what the thing at the beginning? What moves did she execute? It wrong was at the reporting? beginning. Something happened at the beginning. I only watched it like a bit. Once. Something like, happened in the beginning. <laughs> something happened in the beginning. Okay, just so you know, it's eleven o'clock here at night, and I've got the morning. So do not even try and pressure me right now. <laughs> What's your number one? Uh, my number one is hands down the tag match. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. It was, it was lush, and mainly because I haven't seen the Nakamura Joe match. Okay. I know. I hear. Yeah, I haven't seen it. <laughs> well, I'll run down mine quickly. My. Um, yeah. My number three was Amber Moon and Billy Kay. I don't know what the fuck Samuel's talking about. I thought Billy Kay did. What are you smoking in that UK? <laughs> I thought Billy Kay did amazing. I thought she looked great. I love the attire. I love the velvet. I I love her entrance. And then Amber Moon, the entrance is what got me. Her, she looks flawless. She looks beautiful. I love her. And remember before I, I said a little thing. I was like, I think she needs to lose a little bit of weight, or she needs to trim down, or whatever. And she did. She looked phenomenal, fit as hell. And the finisher just took the cake for me. And I love the match. Um, my number two pick, um, hmm, 
Damn, this is going to be tough. Um, You know what? Fuck it. It's not that tough. I got to give it to Bailey and Asuka. I thought it was an amazing yes. match. I thought they told a great story. Um, I was really pulling for Bailey. I like the emotions from the crowd from Sasha Banks and um, Becky Lynch. Like They were really into the match. I thought it was cool. Um, the crowd was involved. The Bailey chants. I always love Bailey chants. Um, and I'm happy that Asuka won. And it was a nice curtain call for Bailey. It was nice. I liked the ending. I liked how they cheered for Bailey. They paid their respects, and then she pointed at the NXT sign and walked off. So I thought it was a great send off from NXT for Bailey. Um, my number one has to go to my boys, the Revival. And Sam, you know me, and you love Dash Wilder, and yeah, he yeah. looked extra delicious on Saturday yeah. night. He did with that gray. Mm-mm-mm. He's looking beefy for me. I love it. Um- well, I may just jump in on that boat, y'all. You no. should, bitch. Come and join us. He's such a ham. Ugh, I love him. But <laughs> is he a ham? He's a I ham. I never use that word ham. There's a girl at work, I always say that smells like ham, but she doesn't. Oh so is that annoys her. That's disgusting. <laughs> You're ratchet. But that was, and then I gotta give um, a shout out to Gargano and Ciampa, they did amazing. And, like, the the storytelling of this match was phenomenal. They had me on the edge of my seat. I, I, I lived for this match. I watched it twice as well. TakeOver was just really good overall. And honorary mention would have to be Shinsuke Nakamura versus Mojo. I enjoyed the match, too. But I only had to pick three guys. So. I need to watch that match back. Um, definitely my number three, I'm going to go a little different. It wasn't the match itself, but it was um, Hideo Itami kind of coming back and oh, yeah, kind of day. taking taking out Austin Aries with the GTS. I thought that was really appropriate because he wasn't on the card. And I was like, come on, like he did return. They kind of need to do something. So I like the feud that they're building with Hideo and Austin because I always thought like he needs to be a heel. Um, I don't really like the feuds that he's been put in since he came up, like with Baron Corbin and now... Um, no way, Jose. But now, Hideo coming back, I feel like it's going to be a really good feud. Um, my number two um, is tough. I loved the Ember Moon Billy K match. So, Sam, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You watched yeah. it once. Go watch it another time, boo. Like, I don't know if you were real sleepy when you watched it, but Billy K is like, my only complaint about Billy. I miss her new, her old theme song. She changed her theme. I like, it's a little theme. bit. What? I, I actually, I, I, I've been meaning to ask you guys this, too. I, you, you don't like the theme? What about you, Sam? Do you like it? I love it. I love it. I think it's... it's I, like, I like it, but I like the older one more, because that's been my recent beat uh, lately, I get so... You. That's, I still feel that way about Charlotte's old theme. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> I kind of understand how you feel now. It's kind of the same thing with, like, Summer Rae's old theme. Like, I still love that one. I don't even remember it, because Call to Me is so memorable. <laughs> too cool. You don't know, remember Too Cool? Oh, I'm glad she got rid of that. That just sounds like the start of Sasha Banks is. Oh, maybe It was just so generic, like generic oh. diva. Anyways, going on to, um, back to Billy Kay and Ember Moon. I loved Ember Moon, like you were saying. She looked great. I love the red eyes. I feel like that really stands out compared to the rest of the women down there. And it just kind of makes her look a little bit different. Because I remember we had a conversation on Twitter with her a couple months back when she had the blonde and we weren't really feeling it. And we're like, come on, girl. So I asked her what she wanted to do with her hair. And she's like, well, I wanted to do colors, but everybody's doing some, that right now. She, so she wanted to stand out. So I feel like the red eyes is so different, especially for the women's division. Um, the move sets were great. I loved Billy Kay, how she did the eat defeat as well. I feel yeah. like that's a really good move for her with her legs. Um, I thought she did great. I loved Billy Kay actually screaming and um, when she couldn't get the two camps she got in the rest phase. She's like, come on, Rap, what are you doing? She's like, come on. Like, she seemed like she really wanted to win the match. So um, I loved the O face off the top rope. I feel like I'm really excited to actually see of all people Mandy Rose to sell that because I feel I've seen a There's couple a of videos on online of Mandy Rose selling it. Yeah, and I've seen it and she, she sells it really well. Like, she Surprise. rolls. So I'm excited to kind of can see um, question, some, of, some of the other women sell. Nick, can I ask you something? Yeah. Is she calling sure. it the old face? Is that what they're going to... No, they didn't give it a name because they just kept saying that they didn't know what it was. But I... they haven't given it a name yet. They yeah. just said, what is that move? Like, right. Like, That's just her. Yeah. That was the name on the indies. But I imagine they're going to do something like an eclipse or like, I don't know, well, she, something she, cool she, with them. She the has moon. the whole blood moon thing. And I love that. The blood Me too. And her theme song is fucking awesome. I love her theme song. Do you guys like the theme song? I adore the theme song. I just can't find it online anywhere. I know. I have I know. Heard. I've been looking for that and Naomi's theme, new theme. I can't find it. I've been it. looking for Naomi's theme. Um, Billy Kay's changed. She didn't come out to the Habanera thing. No, I know. That's what I was talking about earlier. Oh, I thought you said Ember. No. No, not Ember. Um... Billy Kay. Billy Kay, because uh, she has that new kind of like, oh. <laughs> I like it. 
don't know. I like it too. Don't get me wrong. Wait, I just is, really is this like number the two? beat of Black. They were your number, number two. two. Nick, what'd you say? Were they your number two, Billy Kane and Ember? Yeah, that was my number two. Oh, okay. Sorry, uh, my number one. Uh, it's so tough between the tag match and Oscar and Bailey. Um, but I'm gonna do the tag match too. I love the psychology, the chemistry in that yeah. match with those guys, and it's really interesting. I feel like they're really building for Tommaso to turn on um, Gargano at some point, and I feel like that'd be a really cool feud, especially if they do bring the cruiserweight title to NXT. I feel like they could kind of like have a a good center feud, but honestly, they don't really need a title. But no. at the end of the day, I love the revival. Um, I feel like they're the tag team that needed to stay in NXT. I know a lot of people wanted to see them be brought up, same with Ty Dillinger. But um, those guys that I feel like now can be established stars down in NXT. So I'm really looking forward to top it. Guys. Um, I need to watch the Joe Nakamura match. Oh. Top guys, top guys, top guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So apparently, the top guys had the best match of NXT TakeOver from TPP. We think that they did. I, I, it Ivana. was flawless, flawless. Yes, I loved it. That's cool. We all loved have the it. we all have the same number one pick. It was tough because I I loved the Bailey Oscar match. I loved the psychology and kind of the the storytelling behind it. How um, the previous match, like Bailey, wasn't ready and now she was ready for it, and then you could tell in the match. So it was so stiff. I love love Oscar. I feel like she's she's so dominant. It's going to be interesting to see who could take her down, and I hope it will eventually lead to Ember because I don't know if you guys seen that um, backstage little fallout thing with Bailey and Ember afterwards. But yeah, I saw that. It was kind of cool. Yeah. It was kind of like a passing of the torch kind of moment. So. So, yeah, but let's move on to our um, SummerSlam top three. Mm -hmm. So I'll start with James this time. What, where, what were your top three? Oh, damn. Um, shit. If you want to think about it, I could go. Yeah, let me yeah. think about it. Okay. Um, my number three has to be the six-woman tag team match. I thought it was really well put together. I feel like each of the women got a significant amount of time to kind of showcase their movesets. And, like, I love that about SmackDown. I feel like we need to give them praise. Like, SmackDown Live has been great showcasing the women not only character wise but in the ring as well so and i like the return of nikki bella um i was wasn't spoiled with nikki so it was kind of nice to see her come back i like how they still kept the eva marie kind of um character going with that um aside from that um i like how nikki picked up the win and yeah i just thought it was a really good match so my number two i would probably have to go with oh oh that's tough I don't know. Well, I've seen a little bit of Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins. I haven't seen the full show of that yet, but so I'm probably going to pick that one, though. I just feel like um, the match itself, from what I've seen, it was on mute when I was watching it, but the chemistry was really good. I only heard there was a lot of complaints with the whole crowd thing. I still haven't heard that yet with the Universal title, which we will get into later, guys, don't worry. Um, but yeah, so that will be my number two. And then my number one it has to be the women's match, Sasha and Charlotte. They stole the show from the entrances, from everything, from the match, that top rope, it was kind of like the razor's edge into the Frankensteiner off the top. Like, that was insane. Um, and it was really shocking to see Charlotte pick up the title and actually beat the boss. I was like, <gasps> Mitchie and I were watching, and Mitchie's team Charlotte all the way. So yeah. he was, he was like, he was really excited to actually see her win. So, and he, it's interesting, because Mitch isn't the biggest fan of wrestling, but when he gets involved in a story, like, and involved with a woman... He really gets excited. So, like, Charlotte and Bailey are some of his favorites. So, I thought it was really cool to kind of share that moment. So, I feel like that's probably my number one. Okay, I could go now. My yeah, um, okay. my number three is really tough. It's it's either it's between the the six Steve the six woman tag, or and the Enzo Amare and Big Cass versus Jericho and um, you know what I I think I'm gonna have to give it to the women because Enzo was just so sloppy in that match. Oh my god. He was just really, really off at SummerSlam, so I was a bit just You know what? I gotta give them my number three, because Jericho and Owens was just so phenomenal in that match. I love the spot, so that's my number three, um, that tag match. My, well, okay, but you changed about that three times. What is your number three? My number three is Enzo and Big Cass and... Okay. Jericho and Owens because I like the damn bitch <laughs> I know because I don't know but Enzo was just so sloppy in this match but it was still effective and I still like the match but the women I haven't seen it yet so. the women did great they did amazing I liked how they set up the whole Eva Marie thing and said that she's out due to stress from the fans I really like that and I'm so glad that they played with that and then um, Nikki Bella came in it was a nice surprise to see Nikki I was really happy to see her and I love the 
the debut of her new finisher that she hit on Carmella, which planted the seed for what we're going to talk about later, bitches. But mm-hmm. I got to give it to Enzo and Cass and the boy and the boys. But um, my number two has to go to my girl, Charlotte, for winning the Women's Championship again. So she's a two-time Women's Champion. She beat Sasha Banks clean. It was a freaking flawless match. Love the match. The storytelling. The women got like almost 20 minutes. Freaking phenomenal. Probably one of the best women's matches I've seen in a while. Now it's getting tough to say that because we've been seeing a lot of great women matches. And this is just up there. It's just another classic of Charlotte and Sasha. And I love it. So many classics. Yeah. Like, sorry to cut you off. But like, but like, I never thought anything would go past the Bailey sasha match at TakeOver last year. And it's like, with Asuka coming in, having matches, like her match with Emma at TakeOver London was amazing. Flawless. Bailey with her matches with like Nia Jax have been crazy. Like, Everybody. So many matches. Everybody. The women are doing amazing. So I can't say that this was the best women's match ever because there's so many great women's matches these days. I really have to do my homework to really pick out my favorite. But I have to give it to my girl, Sasha. The spots that Sasha pulled off from the top rope, the reverse Hurricane Rana, from the razor's edge. I was just like, oh my God. And then the double knees from the turnbuckle. It was just so many moments. And then Charlotte with her back, flawless. Loved it. And I'm... Obviously, I'm happy that my girl won. Um, love it. And my number one, John Cena and AJ Styles. That match was fucking phenomenal. Beat up John Cena. I love AJ Styles. He's my favorite heel. I'm glad that he's on um, SmackDown. And he's the top guy on SmackDown. He's the meanest, the baddest. He's my favorite heel right now. It's crazy how in just this little feud and him being on SmackDown and them giving him the go, he's became, to me, more entertaining than a Seth Rollins. I'm more entertained to see what AJ Styles got to say because I love the tone of his voice and the passion behind it and the way that he delivers in these matches. Fucking phenomenal. That was Cena's best match ever. And then it was so sentimental at the end of the match when Cena took off his never give up um, bandana and threw it in the middle of the ring and then AJ shows up on SmackDown wearing it. It was just poetic. I fucking loved it. Number one. Period. I haven't seen that match. Is that why he was wearing it? <laughs> you got Nick. Did, if, if, all right. If you're a wrestling Bitch, I've been fan, busy. You got to. No, 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 I, I understand. On vacation and now I'm back in school, so I, I am, need to have some right, time oh, to watch it. Oh, oh, oh. You better rewind, bitch. I'm not coming mm-hmm. for you. I didn't shit your tea, bitch. I'm just telling you that you really should go <laughs> watch this match. You know, because sometimes people look at a John Cena match and just roll their eyes and keep moving. Right, yeah, yeah. I That's what I'm saying. That. Like, it's not. Like, this match was so. Good. It was better than every other match that they ever had. It was the best match on the card. Period. Period. That's my number one. Okay. There you go. Well, Samuel, what is uh, your number three, um, two, and one? My three would be Charlotte and Sasha. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it was really great. That bit at the beginning, like three, four minutes in, when Sasha landed on the back of her neck. Ooh. Oh, fuck, that looked brutal. So I was sloppy. sure everyone in fact about it. I was like, just watch this. Come watch this. It was sloppy. Make sure everyone's seen it. But yeah, I thought that was a flawless match. Um, uh, my number two is Finn and Seth. Um, I'm not really here for the Universal Championship like the crowd aren't, but I thought the match was brilliant. It could have gone either way. There was like no telling what was going to happen. Um, I don't, I'm really glad that, Seth, uh, that Finn won. And my number one is, I can't really say anything else because James already said anything about AJ and Cena, but that's my number one. It's fabulous. It was, yeah, from start to end. Because like you said, like John Cena matches, you kind of, you know, you've seen one of them, you've seen them all in my opinion, but this was incredible. Yeah. But honourable mention, though, like a little bit, um, was, did you watch the pre-show? No. 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 He had Sheamus versus Cesaro, um, and that was really quite a good match. Supply. I know, I, I kind of like the storyline that they're having in the Best of Seven series. It kind of does something for both their characters. I like that. I always love the Best of Seven series. Yeah, so. Nick, remember, we were just talking about it um, a couple of weeks ago when I was watching back the old SmackDown stuff, and you knew exactly what I was watching when I sent you, like, a three-second clip of Booker Yes, yeah, King was, Booker S. Benoit! Yeah, I was like, damn, Nick is good. And you were like, that's the Best of Seven series, James. You better get your life. And I was like, damn, this bitch had the tea. But it, it, I like that. I, I like it. That's cool. I like the idea. But I haven't seen the pre-show yet. But I, I'm definitely going to check it out because I want to see Cesaro. And I heard that it was a good match. I saw JR tweet about it. Seven. I hope you know your uh, 
Sugar Daddy Jr. is tweeting about it. You guys always say it. that. Why do, you, why do you guys always say that Jr. is my sugar daddy? Because. <laughs> 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 You're always sucking on his balls all the time. <laughs> Nick, you're so vulgar. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Nick, you've changed. You used to be a, a cute little innocent princess, and now look what you've done. I think it's your fault, Sam. I think it's you and Gigi's fault. <laughs> um, why? Because <laughs> you guys I think are it's vulgar. Gigi. <laughs> all right, you know, Sam is talking... not vulgar. Don't be coming at me. No, a little princess, man. Sam is a little vulgar. Girl. He doesn't do it on the show, Girl. though. Let's talk to the listeners. Listeners, go down in the chat and tell us which one <laughs> you think is the most vulgar, and we'll see James. What you they think I'll just send screenshots of the group chat. Yeah, let's do that, and then we'll really see who's the vulgar one. Because Sam is... That's fine. Listen. That's fine, but I don't have nothing to hide. Sam keeps it cute on the show for the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> He, he does. does. He does, you guys. No, don't. He but, needs to keep up his brand. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he has a brand to uphold. I but... don't have a brand. Don't be down. <laughs> All right, let's get into Raw, you guys. I really want to talk about. Let's talk about the Universal title because there's a lot of controversy going around this. And then N- Nick, you gave your top three for SummerSlam. So did you, Sam? And did I? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. We all did. All right. Yeah. So now we can get into the Universal Championship. Because there was a whole lot of controversy surrounding this whole thing between the Seth Rollins and Finn Balor um, match at SummerSlam. And, you know, we wish Finn Balor a speedy recovery. It's unfortunate what happened. He took that power bomb um, outside of the ring into the, um, what was it, the barricades? And he separated the his shoulder. Bomb. Yeah, and then he, he popped it right back into place and continued to that make That was gross. What a beast, though. He is, the, he, he is a legit king demon because, like, I couldn't do that. Call the match. I'm done. Like really, your shoulder? But I throw up. <laughs> that's a man's man. But Seth, but the fans, the crowd was so disrespectful and so rude. They were making stupid chants, like so petty. I think it's just so petty and stupid. And they really disrespected the two um, talents that were in the ring. And these two guys are actually legit. They were out there putting on a good match. And I feel like the crowd ruined the match for me. To be honest with you guys, that's why they didn't rank up for me. And I, this was one of the matches that I was really looking forward to. If you guys remember on the last episode. I was talking about how I was so excited for this match, but the crowd really killed it for me. See, like, go ahead. Was the crowd really bad? Because they were terrible. when I watched SummerSlam, I watched it up until the six women match. And then when I was at work, I watched the Finn Balor match, but because I was in work, I couldn't have the sound on, so I couldn't hear the crowd anyway. Mm-hmm. So I, well, I just watched it they were awful. as the match was. I didn't think of the crowd. They were doing that belt sucks. That belt sucks. Ugly oh belt. My God. Stupid like. Like, they did, like, Bailey-type chants, like, that belt is ugly. Like, shows. <laughs> shows upon shows. It was so what a mess. It was such a mess. And they really, that's why I said, Nick, when you, I didn't want to spoil it for you in the group when you were asking me, is it worth watching? And I was like, I think you should watch it. Just so you can see, like, how disrespectful the crowd were. And that's why Seth Rollins put out that tweet that um, Brooklyn really let him down this year. Last year, they, he was on high with them, and this year, they really let him down. And they did. Come on. You guys are so... The fans are crazy. But this is what I don't get. Here's the thing with me. That belt is fucking gorgeous. I love it. Sam, I know you said you didn't like it, and I really wanted to... I didn't say that. Didn't you say that you were not a fan of it? Brandy oh. was one that didn't say that. Oh, Brandy. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, the brand. Get my nose. <laughs> but I love the belt. I think it's different. Um... I love the red. It's it's visually beautiful. Like when you look at it, especially when Finn Balor had his um, signature plates placed on the belt. I fucking loved it. I thought it looked great, especially when he came out on Monday Night Raw wearing it, and then I saw him on Good Morning America with it. I thought the ba- the belt was flawless. But what do you think about it, Sam? Go on. Finn Balor is technically the longest reigning Universal Champion. <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen a post of that before, and I thought that's quite interesting. Um. I don't mind the belt. I've got no issues with it. Like me and Nick both said the same thing. Like when we played two K sixteen, when we played two K sixteen, we both made that belt before, like for the Raw, and we made a blue one for SmackDown. So I've got no issues with it. I'm okay with it. What about you, Nick? Yeah, like I was talking about it in the chat with you earlier. I don't see what the big issue is. It symbolizes Raw. It symbolizes the Raw brand. So of course. Once you see that belt, you know it's the Raw Championship, you know, right. or the Universal Championship or whatever. Um, I don't see what the big deal is. I didn't watch the match um, um, unless it was uh, on mute, so 
So I don't really have much to say about it. I think it's beautiful. And I think um, we'll get into the other titles later on, but we didn't hear much grief about those titles, did we? No, everybody... No, there's loads of praise about you. That's what I'm saying. So, like, what the fuck, What the fuck? (laughs) You know what? Let's talk about the belts right now, since we're on the topic with the belts. WWE has changed. Do you guys not watch UFC? All the belts in UFC look alike, because it's their brand. That's their logo. So, WWE is taking a little bit from that, I can see, with their championships. Boxing does the same thing. All their belts look similar. And WWE is transitioning into that. They do the plates. They have the custom plates that they put onto these um, title belts for... For the champions, like Charlotte gets the one with the eye. Sasha Banks got the 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 legit boss. Finn Balor got the Finn Balor logo with the demon shit. That's how they're doing it now to to switch it up a bit when there's different champions. When Nikki Bella gets her, if she wins the um, SmackDown Women's Championship, it's going to be fearless on it. You know what I mean? So why are you guys complaining? Then they're complaining, oh, they just copied the World Heavyweight Championship and did this and that, and then the women's title, they're like, oh, somebody says something about the women's championship and the man uh, looking so much like, um, no, they said that the new belt looks so much like the women's championship. And I'm like, isn't that what we wanted for years, for the women to be treated equally, to have the same things that the men's do on, on the brand, but people are going to get mad because they don't have a stupid butterfly belt anymore? Now they're mad that the Deep's title's gone. Is that, like, <laughs> what, what? Like, I just can't. This is why I always go back. I'm going to stop saying that people are stupid because I hate hearing that word, but I have to say it. Wrestling fans are so stupid. I just can't. They complain to complain. <laughs> we hear that every single podcast. Yeah. I just, I don't That's going to be on your t-shirts. It just drives me crazy. Wouldn't that be a cool t-shirt? I should freaking profit off of this. Wrestling you fans should brand are that stupid. Bitch. Hey. hey, I'm the brand. Don't get me started. I, well, oh, I, oh, I oh. said it, bitch. I said it. Wrestling fans are stupid. Somebody, listener, put it on a shirt for me and wear it. <laughs> I'd retweet it. <laughs> but what do you think about the other belts, Nick? I love the other belts. Um... I was kind of wondering what they were going to name the women's title on SmackDown, but just the SmackDown Women's Championship. I'm and it's fine kind of with that. Like, okay. Like, I thought it was going to be a little different, but you know what? It's okay. I love the design of it. I had it on my universe mode as well. So <laughs> the uni- or the SmackDown tag team titles, I thought that we were interesting. I kind of like the different shade of blue that they have for it with the leather. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I just I, I love SmackDown. I'm Team SmackDown Live right now with how they're building up all of the characters and and now these titles. And they already announced the six-pack six challenge with these women to determine who the first champion will be. So now that gives us four weeks to develop the storyline with it. So I just love that. No, it's not four weeks. It's two. Yeah, uh, it's two. It's two. Yeah. What about you, oh, Sam? Okay. How do you feel about the belts? <laughs> I love them. I think they look really great. I don't really care about the names of them. Because yeah. I'm still going to call it SmackDown Tag, Raw Tag. Yeah. Either Roman. way, at the end of the day, we would always say the SmackDown Women's Championship. Yeah. You know? So that's but, why I don't really care about the names of like, them. They what, are what they are. Would you guys like them to call it the inner species, like Daniel Bryan was saying on, on Smack Talk? Like, you know what? For a second, I was like, a new, <laughs> so I really thought the tag team belts were purple. I did until Renee Young said, no, it's um, blue. I was like, what? And that's because you're a colorblind I bitch. know, but Jimmy Uso thought the same shit. And I was like, am I colorblind? Because he thought the same shit. As you I are did. colorblind. Do you not realize the conversation that we had two or like five days ago? Nick, with the let's orange not the do it because I can't drag a bitch through a computer. <laughs> Nick, I would be dragging you. You know what? We even had a poll on our Twitter account and bitch, I won. So. You, know, you know that my dumb ass accidentally voted for orange too. <laughs> That's because you're colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even read colors either. <laughs> Jeez, are you dyslexic too? <laughs> well, is this about whole, the whole Becky's hair thing? Yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but I was sorry. right. One of the listeners came Thank to you, back. Thank you, Sam. Hold on, bitches. Because one of the listeners came to back for me. They were like, no, James was right. Becky Lynch did dye her hair after WrestleMania. <laughs> one listener. <laughs> he was right because I went back to go look and he was absolutely right. And that's when her hair was fucking Yeah, it was dark. I told it's you. Yeah. But it's orange now. It's still orange. <laughs> her hair is fucking red. She's trying to be. No, I can't. You were a mess, no. James. What, okay, what, what's going on? Even Marie got. Eva has red hair, bitch. Come hey, what color hair is Becky Lynch got? It looks red. Looks red, but it's actually orange. It looks red what to a, me, uh, apparently. You know what? I showed I showed Mitch uh, the whole little like tiff that you and I got into, and he was like, "Honest to God, he's like, it's filters. That's why this bitch can't tell a difference because all these photos with Becky Lynch 
the filters are changing her hair to make it look a little darker. So this no. bitch who's colorblind thinks it looks red, but Listen, it's actually orange. Mitchie, let me tell you something, bitch. That fucking hair on SmackDown this past week looked red to me. <laughs> bitch, it was orange. You're a fucking mess. I'm so, hey, anyways, we can mess, be here all day. Mess. Let's move on. I let's know. go. Okay, so let's talk about the women's title then. <laughs> Um, I just gonna say I sent you about the picture of them. Of who? Eva and Becky stood next to each other. No, oh, let me see. Just wanna prove a point. No, Eva Marie's hair looks purple in this. Oh, I just can't. What wait. a mess, bitch! Don't even try, Sam. I did this the other week. I even sent him color patterns with red and orange, <laughs> and I asked him what colors he's seen. Like, it's not gonna help. That... Well, this one's better. Than... I don't even try it, James. That looks orange. That looks red. To, I, I, it, it is what it is. Anyways, <laughs> um, all right. Let's talk about Raw. What happened on Raw, guys? We had we had who who came? Charlotte came out to celebrate her women's championship win. You know, we didn't see Nia this week. Where is Nia? What's going on? Oh, Nia. She was on Hugo Knox's Snapchat, like so hanging she was out in with Florida. Him, so maybe she's just having a week off. Maybe, you know, it's after SummerSlam, they're getting ready to... And then Bailey was having her big moment, so they really mm -hmm. had to skim down the women so Bailey can get... All right, I got it. All right, Nick, take it away. Yeah, so, um... Well, <laughs> okay. You just toss it over my way. Um, Charlotte and... <laughs> Charlotte and Dana came into the ring, so I really like how Charlotte came in. She's like, I told y'all, like, I am the women's champion. I'm superior. Like, oh, I put Sash on this shelf. There's no woman on this roster that can compete to me. So at first I was like, damn, is Nia Jax going to be coming out? But um, when Mick Foley came out, I kind of understood who it was going to be. And then the crowd really got invested and kind of clicked in who it was going to be. So I think it's so appropriate, especially with the current call at TakeOver with Bailey. Now she's on Raw, fresh into a feud with the women's champion. So I feel like it's a nice little um, little boy, but now that Sasha's gone, it will be nice to have Bailey there. Once we get Nia involved as well, Paige is kind of on the outskirts, so we don't know what the fuck's going on with her. But, um, but yeah, I thought it was really nice, and I liked how she challenged um, Charlotte for the title, and she's like, sister, you better get to the back of the line. And then she made her protege challenger. So I thought it was really cool. I thought it was a really fun segment. Um, but what do you think, Sam? I liked it. It was good. I haven't really seen much. I've just seen the YouTube highlights. Um, I love like this little attitude that Charlotte's got lately. It stemmed really nicely. She's so prissy lately. Like, yeah, she's it's so very, arrogant. Um, it's how, like, I don't want to talk about TNA, but like, you know, like the Madison Rain character, like when she was the Queen Bay. Mm -hmm. I think this is how it should have been done. Right. You know so what? This is this is this is brilliant. Charlotte, I have to say this. Charlotte is one of the greatest heels WWE has going for them right now. Mm -hmm. The well, way yeah, I, I've always said, like I've never really a big fan of Charlotte, but like I'm loving this heel character from her. Her mic work has improved from zero to one hundred real fucking quick. That girl, go back and watch her first NXT interview. After her match with, um, I think it was Natty and everybody. No, I think she cut some kind of promo and people threw her mad shade. It was it was getting her ready for her match with Natty or whatever. I think it was when she first turned heel. I don't remember. Anyways, but people threw her so much shade and said that she can't talk and blah, 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 blah. Look at her now. This bitch knows exactly what she's doing. She's legit carrying a division. Her and Sasha Banks, they're just doing the damn fucking thing. They're pioneers of this new divas a woman's era. And mm -hmm. the way that she was out there talking on the mic, she talks, she speaks so freely and so comfortably on that mic. Like, she doesn't even fumble on her words at all. I was just, like, I was just watching her, and I was so, like, into it. I was so intrigued by her. And she gives me, like, I know that you said that she gives you Madison Rain, Rain vibes. She gives me certain from Game of Thrones all fucking day. Just how... So don't watch Game of Thrones. Uh, well, you don't watch it? I thought you do. Mm, no. How do you know about Bitch, this? I don't either. How I've been where it talks about it, so I know what goes on. Oh, well, you guys are not good nerds. I thought you guys were nerds and, like, no, nerds king of watch nerd. Game of Thrones. What the fuck? You guys play fucking Pokemon, but you need to tell me you don't watch fucking Game of Thrones? <laughs> are yeah. you kidding? Bitch, I got Pokemon, Batman, and Dragon Ball Z in wrestling. Okay. But you, Game of Thrones will fit in there. Everybody who does all that shit that you just said, Nick, watches Game of Thrones. That's why I find Okay, it. well, cookies in the mail for them. They have a mail <laughs> <laughs> Cookies. Trying to get a career together. But, uh, I can't. I really can't. Like Game of Thrones is the fucking shit, and I really need you and Mitch to sit down and binge it and watch it together in your sex I life. Baby Mitch has can't... time to watch 
Thrones. Let me tell you something, bitch. You watch Game of Thrones with your boo, your sex life will skyrocket. Okay? You will get <laughs> Girl, you don't need a purple that, huh? Okay. Let me tell you something. Watch <laughs> Game of Thrones and then have a conversation with me. But anyways, Charlotte was just phenomenal on that mic. That's all I gotta say. Am I biased because she's my favorite? Eh. Do I love it that she's um two-time women's champion? Eh. Yeah, so what? And she deserves it. She's that bitch. Yeah, what's it to you? Oh, yeah, what's it to you? <laughs> I'm just so happy. <laughs> I'm over the moon. And I loved all the tweets that the listeners sent me. They were like, oh, James is probably twerking right now. James is happy right now. Ha- bitch, you damn right. I was so happy. And then when Bailey came out, I thought it was great with Mick Foley. She got a great pop. Ba- I was so happy for Bailey because she should have been here. You know, she should have been a part of this whole thing. But I feel like it's timing and it's appropriate. And I feel like now that Sasha Banks is out on this injury, I don't know if this injury is a work and I don't know if it's legit, but well, whatever from what, it is. From what I've seen, it's, um, she's just, she has some nagging injuries. So she I think she's just off. kind of taking some time to heal. <laughs> and, and she got married too. So I think they're planning a honeymoon or something. Yeah, so. t- and Sasha I mean, if any it. girl deserves some time off, Sasha it's Sasha Banks. Banks. Like this woman puts her body on the line. So I think Charlotte needs some time off. I don't think so. Charlotte's red hot. Charlotte's ready to go. Um, Sam. No, yeah, she is. But I mean, like, you know, when was the last time she had a break? I think she she'll get one eventually. She'll I think maybe one. after this title reign, I don't think it will be as long as her first, first one. So mm-hmm. I think maybe after this, it will be a nice time to kind of cool off Charlotte before maybe like the Rumble or something. Well, you know now now that there's the the whole brand split, they work less days. So I think Charlotte's fine because you know during the week I see her a lot at home now. Like she's always chilling. Mm, that's true. That. So she has time to recuperate. You know what, Charlotte? At this point, like. I don't want to hear people be like, oh, it's because he's a Charlotte fan or whatever, whatever. Sasha has had some hard hidden matches, and she's hit that mat awkwardly. We've all seen it happen. Bullshit her. She's going to need some time to sit down and, you know, heal up a bit. Charlotte's not as banged up as Charlotte right now. So I feel like Charlotte's strong enough, healthy enough to keep a legit reign going right now. Well, so granted, at the same time, like, just to add in on that, they're both different body types as well for women. Like, Charlotte is Charlotte. built more with more yeah. muscle, so she can take more impact is another thing. Like, Sasha's a small girl, so... Not only about to that, have some... Sasha hits hmm? the mat awkwardly. You cannot... You cannot I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny that. But I just, I see, like, I see your point with that. But I also just want to bring that in, too. Like, Charlotte can take more impactful moves. I'm not saying she's a big-ass girl or nothing. I'm just saying, like, she's more she's muscular, more defined. She's yeah. A, she's a beast. But I feel like Sasha, that, I feel like that deteriorates from the Sasha character. Because I feel like Sasha is on that same level as her. I just feel like Sasha needs to be more careful with her landing. I feel like if she was, she would have still been. I think Sasha's going to be real smart when she comes back on taking risks. Because I feel like sometimes she goes over and above. You know what I mean? I have a question for you guys. She the fans, really, doesn't yeah, she? She, she think about her own safety before. She, yeah, she needs to put her She wants to put on the greatest show she can for the fans. And mm-hmm. we really appreciate that she does that. But, you know. I want her to be healthy. Look after yourself. Yeah. yeah, I want her healthy. And I want her to have a long-ass career. So I'm going to need her to calm down. Reel it in a bit. That's all I got to say with Sasha. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but So with Bailey coming back, uh, returning, Sam, what do you think? Blah, making her debut. What do you think of that happening? Um, I'm, I don't mind. I just are, you looking forward, are you looking forward to the Charlotte and Bailey feud? He's not a mm-hmm. Bailey fan. What? Oh yeah, that's right. Not a yeah, Bailey that's fan. I mean, it's, but I I don't want to say that I'm not a Bailey fan. You know, I appreciate Bailey. I just don't, don't connect. connect. Yeah. yeah, but like in the same way that I don't really connect with Charlotte, but I really do appreciate this amazing yeah character. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it makes sense. So I'm I'm okay with it, but the SmackDown division has my attention right now. I mean, it's good. You know, we spoke about the women. We've said all we could say about what's going on. You know, we didn't see Nia Jax, but um, I'm excited for Bailey. Man. I'm excited for Bailey, and I can't wait to see what she does. Um, do you think she's going to be at Clash of Champions? I think she is going to have her title shot right off the bat because they ain't giving it to Paige. That's for sure. Nia Jax is still being built up. I feel like when Paige comes back, that's when Nia Jax should just attack Paige, and they should have her basically squash page you know a oh, former, that page is punishment. yeah former champion to get that would be really impactful for Nia Jax um but with the guys real quick before we move on to Smackdown they better put that fucking belt on Kevin Owens and call it a motherfucking day thank you thank you, you know? huh I read that there were the rumors it was supposed to be 
I don't know. It, I hope it doesn't they really want make to chaos. Evans and Finn as a rivalry for the main roster. Who's in the Fatal Four next week? It's Big Cass, Roman Reigns, um, Kevin Evan Owens, Owens, and who's the fourth guy? Big Cass, Roman Reigns. Kevin Seth Owens. Is it Sammy? Is it Sammy Zayn? No, Sammy nope. Zayn lost to Seth. Oh, Seth Rollins. Oh, damn. So, My baby Seth. So who's in the who's the four? I'm confused now. No, it's Seth Rollins, Big Cass, um, Kevin, Kevin Owens, Owens and Roman, Roman Reigns. Reigns. Yeah. So I hope it goes to Roman. As much as I love Seth Rollins, I feel <coughs> sorry. I feel like it's a new belt, new guy. You know what I mean? Give it to somebody new, fresh, like they did with Finn Balor. But I think they're gonna go and give it to Seth Rollins because they feel comfortable with Seth. What about you? I can I see. Seth. Seth. I can see Seth. Seth. Oh, carry on. Can you imagine how random it would be if they put it on Big Cat. <laughs> it would. I think this is a great opportunity for Big Cass to kind of be showcased as one of. Kind of maybe potentially one of the up and coming guys. Yeah, because I don't. So think, I I think he's taking the pinball though for sure. I don't think they look at Big Cass and Enzo as a tag team. I f- I feel like they look at them as separate stars because they keep teasing it, um, putting them in singles matches. But I think I see I, by I see by next year's draft them both going separate ways. I don't know. I think a feud is going to happen between the two of them on Raw. Oh. That's what I see happening. I see some changes coming. And we've seen some changes on SmackDown, bitch. And I cannot mm. wait. Let's get into it. Yes, we did. Let's yeah. get into it. Sam, do you want to kind of talk about it? Since no, you can just do it. It's okay. And I'll just like sit and soak up all the amazingness of it. Okay. Well, actually, James, do you want to kind of cover it? <laughs> yeah, I can do it. All right. I love it. your cover. We get it. Thank you, darling. That's what the boys say. <laughs> we get into SmackDown. Let's talk about Miss Alexa Bliss. And well, you know, early in the show they introduced the uh, women's championship and the uh, WWE Tag Team Championships. Both belts were gorgeous. We already told you guys about that earlier in the show. We like the belts, and I, you know, I'm surprised that the the casual fans that you guys were into it too, because I was ready for it. I was like, oh, here we go. They're gonna complain, but you guys seem to be accepted. And I don't understand why you guys don't like the the Universal title. Maybe you guys just don't like the name of it. But anyways, um, we start off with Becky Lynch and, Sh- and um, Alexa Bliss. They had a match against each other, and we had Natty and Naomi on commentary. Naomi, why were you there? Why were you sitting out there? Naomi didn't say anything. And I'm like, oh, this is why I can't connect with Naomi. This is exactly why. I was so why. disappointed. This, I was like, this is why. She doesn't give me anything. Naomi, you need to take your opportunities. When they give you it, fucking do something with it. It's a platform. I She freezes up. She clams up for me. I don't know what it is. When she had Sasha Banks and Tamina with her, she was all sassy. She was ready to go. Da, 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 da. Natty was giving it to her more. And Natty needed something to play off of. So Natty didn't do that well either. I'm not going to say because last week I was oh, going for hey, Natty. No, you're going to be like, oh, it's all Naomi's fault no, 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 why no, no, Natty no. didn't do it. No, I'm just saying, like, Natty didn't do well either, because Natty, being a vet at, at this stage in her career, she should have been a- able to carry this alone, even if Naomi wasn't giving her anything. Because Naomi mm. really didn't give her anything. It was like, N- Natty could have just sat out there by herself. But anyways. It, w- it would have been much better, but okay. I think it would have been much better if they focused the interview on Naomi, because I, I mean on fucking Natty. But anyways, the, they, they just wasn't giving me anything out there mm-hmm. for me. Sorry. I, I love them both, but they didn't give me anything. But I hear you. When it comes to the match, fucking Alexa Bliss is just a fucking shit. I love Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss hits her spots on point. Alexa Bliss knows where to go. Alexa Bliss knows how to call a match. She knows how to reach, hit all her spots. She knows how to make moves look effective. I like that kick to the back of the head that she hit Becky Lynch with, which had um, Becky tied up on the ropes. And then she stomped on her. I love that move that she does so bitchy but Alexa Bliss is the motherfucking shit and I feel like yeah I love the finish how um Becky Lynch got her into disarm it was different it was new and I, I I thought it was cool um I'm happy that she tapped out to Becky Lynch because I really feel like Becky Lynch needed a win they need to stop building up Miss Becky Lynch again especially now with the women's title is around the you know now they got the women's belt Becky Lynch needs to stop winning some matches and what I will say about Becky Lynch is that fucking outfit is fucking banging Bang mm-hmm. yeah. Thank you. Okay, Bang. I was worried you were going to be like, I don't like it. But really? I so my favorite. You didn't think I'd like it? I love it. I was it. worried. I was a little worried just because I know you're hit and miss with Becky's outfit. So Yes. Yes, and this is the one. This is it. You know how I always talk about the women I, I love when they evolve? Me and you were talking about this, Sam, with Liv. We were like, oh, she needs to evolve, and then she'll find her signature look. And we were talking about how our girl Aaliyah found her signature look today. We were all 
Hooten and Raven. I feel like Becky Lynch has found it. This is it. It's fucking gorgeous. I love it. Okay, sorry to cut you. Off. Sorry to cut you off. What is this new Aaliyah look? I, I haven't seen it. Go look in the group. It's up there. Just scroll up a bit and you'll see. It's really really cute. She has the little. She has the little Ariana Grande ears with it. It's cute. Oh man. fuck that shit. Hey, oh god. <laughs> Nick is such a cunt today. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Who pooped in your Cheerios? No biscuits for Nick. Jesus. But anyways, going back to the match. Becky Lynch looked phenomenal. I'm glad that Becky Lynch won. But Nick, what did you think about this whole match and the two women sitting outside on commentary? Um, I thought it was really appropriate to have the Alexa-Becky match again, especially because when Alexa won in her debut match against Becky. So I feel it was appropriate Becky picked up the win. Like you mentioned, she needs to get momentum. Because I feel like she's one of the top contenders to yeah. be the first ever champion on SmackDown. So um, aside from those women on the outside, I agree with you, both of them. They they just lacked the opportunity. They really should have gotten in on each other. Yeah. And they didn't. And I honestly feel like Naomi, honey, we've talked about it on the show. We love the new gimmick. But if you have that much brightness that much excitement in your gimmick you need to bring that when you're on the mic as well like come on honey i've been i've been advocating for you for years you've had moments on the mic where you're so good you're so sassy you bring it so much you bring all that frustration that you had backstage to the mic so i don't know what's going on with her i feel like she's maybe not really had kind of retransitioning into being a baby face role maybe not knowing how to talk back and without kind of showcasing her heel tendencies but at the end of the day girl we said it you need to be sassy like you i need something more from her natty uh natty girl like you know what i love natty in the ring don't get me wrong i feel like she's really great on smackdown i'm happy that she's a heel i'm i'm liking the direction of the character that's going with her it's just the delivery of her it's just hit and miss like sam said with other people i just don't connect with natty and the mic skill is my main thing so aside from that though i thought the match was really great and i uh, they're giving the women on SmackDown a lot of time um, for their matches, which is needed. So, What about you, Sam? Um, there was a part in the match where for ages Becky just had Alexa's arm like in the middle of the ring. Mm -hmm. I'd love that. Just like, it was like really classic old school chain wrestling kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then when she kind of got out of it and then Becky still had their arm. That still had her arm. Uh, but yeah, that's, you've, that you guys have caught cool. most it really. I agree with Nick about Natty, though. Like, I don't really connect with Natty either. But I used to connect with, like, the old... Natty, you know when she had, like, the um, the red hair when she first debuted and she had that, like, weird piano-y violin music? Mm -hmm. You connected with that, Natty? I love that, Natty. I feel like we don't even know that, Natty. No, yeah, she's... I like, know, gone, that's... She's a, dead and gone now, like, She just came out and I really beat like, up the... I guess I'd, I'd have to go back and watch her on the mic again, like, back in the day, because all I remember her was going, yeah, baby. Like, yeah, she was quite young, so, like, it was, like, what, like, maybe... How many years has she been in that phone now? Maybe eight oh, years? Gosh. That was, like, two thousand eight. Yeah, so, like... But she had this really, like, gravelly... All, voice, I, all I, I remember was her beating young, up the Bella really. Twins. That's all I remember. But, huh? you know, I got to come to Natty's back a little bit because I feel like you guys are just tearing her apart. I feel like you guys don't understand her character, maybe. I think that's what it is because I understand Nick saying that. Her oh, here goes James preaching. Here we go. Everybody sit down. The congregation is all ready to hear it. All right. Amen. <laughs> Let me tell you. I feel, Nick, I understand exactly what you mean when you say that her deliverance is a hit or miss here and there. You're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like that's part of her character. She she is corny. Natty is the... She's that girl... Uh, you know what, bitch? I've heard this preach I don't know how many times. No, it's part of her character. It, she's it, supposed to fuck up on the mic. She's oh not. I, that's what I'm saying. James. She's not fucking up. She's supposed to be condescending and annoying. And... And she's that the one that you didn't do your homework, but there's that bitch in the front See, row. That's, Man, that's she didn't not get the what's homework. transferring off to me. That's not what transferring that's off. Why, that's fitness. why I said. I feel before. like it's just read off the exactly. script. It's just not good. Exactly. Sorry. That's why I said I don't think you understand her character because it's not reading to you. She's the cat lady. Cat women. Are, the, the, the cat lady is weird. She's weird and she's kooky and she makes. Well, you scratch listen. Her head. I know. I love Natty on Total Divas. Kooky cat lady like that. Natty. I I've always said transition that into a character role. That's the real Natty. This so, isn't Natty. This so is her reading off lines. Would it be better for you if Natty actually brought her cats on TV? I think she Hell yeah. That. I really think she should be the legit cat lady. Yes, bring your cats to the ring and have them. Oh my God, can you imagine? She'd have like little um, 
soft pillows for her velvet pillows on the outside so she'd bring down our cats and she'd have to get people to set them up there. <laughs> yeah, that would be back, cute. Back, she could shove the other women out of the way and she'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, um, Two Paws needs to do his hair right now. <laughs> yeah, it would be great. Like You could see like Eva Marie coming backstage to get her makeup done or something and then when she walks by, she sees that a cat's already in her seat and she's probably like, <laughs> excuse me? You know, and then they're natty. There's she so many... just show up and they could be like, excuse Excuse me, what are you doing yeah, here? Like and the Bella. camera pans down, and it's just the cat. <laughs> I don't know. I just I feel like I feel like Natty is one of the misunderstood women in the roster. I feel like people don't understand her or whatever. And then another we'll see. thing, we'll see what happens? With another this. thing in, in her long ass career, WWE hasn't given her that many moments to speak. So I, I know that she's been in WWE for so long, but she hasn't had that many moments to speak. But come on, Natty, get it together. Like, I will agree with Nick this week that she didn't deliver. I'm not going to say you're wrong, Nick, because you're absolutely not. Her and Naomi both failed. And this is why I always say that Naomi's a hit or a miss. And I, mm -hmm. I always go back to that because Naomi has not made that switch where I feel like she's capable enough to to cut a promo like a Charlotte, cut a promo like a Sasha Banks. And people be like, yeah, she can. She's done it before. But yeah, she's done it before. Yeah, she can. But here's the thing. She's not consistent. Sasha Banks is consistent. Charlotte's consistent. Nikki Bella's consistent. Naomi's well, mm -hmm. not. Sorry. I'm sorry. That's all I got to say about that. But let's move on. If you guys have anything else to add on. No, I'm good. Nope. All right, I want to make a mention a mention about JBL because JBL threw the read of the century on SmackDown. Oh my god, and yeah, I heard. I it. sent that in the group text. Well, I forget who was in the match. I think it was the Uso brothers. Yeah, the Usos were in the match and a tag team match. So David Atunga made a mention that he ran into Rikishi on the set of Jennifer Hudson's new movie because apparently Rikishi and Jennifer Hudson are in a movie together. So JBL, <laughs> he's like, "Oh my wife," and blah 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 blah. And then JBL cuts him off. He goes. Oh, he's like, oh, your wife. He's like, I know that she's a struggling actress. Maybe she should reach out to the Miz, and the Miz could give her some advice. And then he goes, <coughs> he goes, what? <laughs> he, like he he threw David on Tucker off so bad. David on Tucker goes, what? He's like, my wife is an Academy Award actor. And then Amaro got in, and he's like, yeah, she has an Oscar. Blah 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 blah. And Jamie goes, yeah, she's had some success, but where is she now? <laughs> I was like, yo, Jamie. Yo, that was the read of the JBL session. tried it. Yo, I mad respect for JBL for that. Because they, he he really threw David Atunga off. But what I will say about David Atunga on the SmackDown um, team, I'm, he's growing on me. I'm not going to say I like him. I'm not going to say he's a JR or a Michael Cole or a Marlo. I, I'm just going to say that. I, he's growing on me. I'm starting to like him. Even though sometimes his references are corny. Like he called Carmella Izzy. Uh, Izzy Azilia, whatever the bitch's name is. I was like, really, bitch? Really? I was like, who is that anymore? Do people even listen to her music anymore? Who, Iggy? Yeah, I was I like... Do. I was, all right, Sam. <laughs> I, didn't pick, I didn't pick up on that reference, actually. I was just like, what? Yeah, he said uh. Carmella got swag like Iggy Azilia. And I was like, oh, boy, bye. But uh, that's all I wanted to mention, because I thought that was a good-ass lie from JBL. Such a fucking asshole. Yes, well, let's go... Let's Let's move in to um, Nikki Bella's return on SmackDown. So her match that she had with Sam's boo, Carmella. Yeah. So Carmella, so Carmella comes out uh, to a great pop. Um, that I, she, I believe they were still in. Hmm? Notice that she didn't talk on mic when she came out. Yes. I wanted to talk about that. Do you guys think it was because of what we knew what was coming, or do you think they scrapped it? I think they scrapped it. I think they were like, "Girl, you're just not connecting." And I feel like because she's now turning heel. Maybe they can have her trash talking. I think we'll I think see. they're going to restart it. I feel like it was for the segment with Nikki Bella. They wanted to get Carmella quickly out there. And I feel like now that she's a heel, because me and Sam and you were talking on the last show that Carmella's gimmick works better as a heel. And I feel like yes. WWE... Everything that we said about Carmella is coming into fruition on SmackDown. I will I say I know, that. guys. But go on. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Um, so, yeah. So, Nikki Bella comes down gets an amazing reaction. So, that was the only thing. Like, I understand the reason why she had to be brought back onto the quote-unquote heel team on SummerSlam. Yeah. But it just kind of felt odd to have her be paired with those those two, like Alexa and Natty. Um, but I like how she is now being built as kind of like the top baby face of SmackDown, which is nice. Um, so, she comes in. I'm just having her moment. Renee's in the ring. I didn't know who Renee was at first. Um, I was like, who's this bitch? <laughs> um, but anyway, so she comes in. She's... 
starting your interview, she's so happy to be here. And then all of a sudden, Carmela just attacks her from behind, kicks her in the back of the shin, and just starts wailing on her in the back of the head. She has to get pulled off. She has no fuck. She's chirping Nikki Bella in the face. She grabs her, puts her into the flatliner, raises her hand. The crowd is kind of cheering and booing at the same time. A lot of the announcers and commentators are shocked. So she gets out of the ring. They pan out to Nikki. She looks a little injured. And then Carmella comes back into the ring, snatches her up, and hits her with um, the Bella Buster. So hit her with her own finisher. So I feel like that was really cool. The Mella Buster? Oh, the Mella Buster. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Get it right. <laughs> Excuse me. Cool. So, so yeah, I thought, um, so interesting. I did not see this coming, actually. So that's why I'm really liking SmackDown. They're, they're thinking outside the box. Yeah. Um, so, Sam, I want to start with you. What do you think of your girl? Because I know you've been a huge advocate for Carmella ever since she started. So this is a really big moment for her this week, taking down one of the top female stars of the company. Oh, my God. I was, like, loving it. I think I waited so long for this. Because, like, when she debuted, she obviously she was this big heel character. And I think that's what made me connect with her, really, at the beginning. She was, like, this nasty girl. Um, and the leopard print, obviously linked to that straight away um i just think it was incredible like it's it's been a long time coming she started to get a bit stale um like the, she tried you know to do the whole the new speech as she was coming out and it just wasn't working for the crowd just weren't connecting with it so i think she needed to mix it up and the best way for her to mix it up was to become a heel because we kind of seen at SummerSlam that you know nikki was she was over with the crowd, so they need, I think they kind of tried to think of to swap her out with someone, so there could be three on three still. Uh, and at the, this this moment in time, Carmella is the best choice for that. I don't think I don't think that was the reason why Carmella switched to a heel. I feel like Nikki Bella was brought back prematurely because of what happened with Eva Marie, or unless e, unless um, Nikki Bella was going to show up regardless on SummerSlam, maybe post match, and um, you know make her re debut then because Nikki's ready to go. But when it comes to Carmella and her heel turn, I always thought Carmella works better as a heel. I've said that for a while. Do I like her as a baby face? Yeah, I liked her as a baby face, but I liked her with Enzo and Cass. I don't like her alone as a baby face. I like her with Enzo and Cass. But um, I feel like I'm, ex I'm, I'm really excited to see where this goes with her because I, I feel like her attacking Nikki Bella... Um, it's was, a bold statement. It, She's been the longest reigning Divas champion. Yeah, it was like it was a big statement, and like I, I love like the storyline behind it. Like Nikki Bella's just brought back, and now she's gonna get all this sympathy, and Carmella's gonna get all this fucking heat. And I kind of just want to sorry to cut you off, but I kind of just want to bring it back to remember when Carmella had her SmackDown debut. She was so excited to come back or to make her debut, and Natty took that away from her. And, and now, so it's now kind of cool to see her transition and now take Nikki Bella's moment away from her. Yeah. I feel like I feel like she's getting the short end of the stick. That's why she switched up because Natty. They even brought her. that up. Like she was the last woman to be drafted, yeah. and maybe she wants to like kind of make a bigger statement. But continue. Sorry. She's gonna come out. I feel like Carmella. We're gonna hear from Carmella because SmackDown has been doing so great with the women. You hear that, guys? They're doing so great with the women. You guys mm -hmm. bashed SmackDown <laughs> off the first hour. You guys watched it like ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now everybody's ranting and raving how much they love SmackDown. But anyways, I feel like with Carmella, her heel turn was necessary. It had to happen. I don't feel like they did it because Nikki Bella got this big pop. I feel like Nikki Bella was just there just to replace Eva Marie, but point blank and period. And they just figured out a way to shuffle the women around to make it work and make it make sense. And Carmella has been interrupted and disrespected and she got her ass beat at SummerSlam. Nikki Bella fucking dragged her at uh, SummerSlam. And she was the one that got most of the beating in the match. And um, I, I, I like her. That's true. She yeah, got she did. Yeah. And, and then she got dragged by Natty on SmackDown. So I feel like that, that frustration is going to work for her character. So then again, it makes me think, did WWE plan this or like who knows but smackdown is just brilliantly booking their women and the fans just don't understand it but now they're starting to come around but um i'm happy for this i'm glad that carmella turned um heel and i can't and did you guys watch um talking smack did you guys see yes. what happened there i, I yeah we'll talk about we'll reaction about afterwards yeah so uh, carmella I, i'm i'm glad i'm happy and i can't wait for next week i really cannot wait for next week so next week, let's do a, just a quick little prediction. I feel like Natty and Naomi should have a match, and we should get Alexa and Becky out there. 
Because I feel like those two on the mic against each other on commentary, because I feel like we need to hear more from Alexa. We heard a little bit of her on the mic when she was coming down in her entrances, but I want to hear a little bit more because she's so bitchy. She's so catty. So I feel like that'd be a good opportunity. And then have Naomi and um, Natty kind of have their match and showcase what they're really kind of their strong suits is their wrestling ability. Right. So. So I feel like that, and I feel like Carmelo really needs to kind of get on the mic, maybe even just have a segment and explain why she did this. So I rather have. I feel like Nikki Bella needs another interview, and I need Carmelo to come out and beat her up again. I I, I yeah, wanted to keep, keep doing it. Keep yeah, because makes yeah, more of a threat of Carmelo. Yeah, it's making Carmelo look like a really jealous, bitter bitch. Like she's mad that the longest reigning Divas champion, the star of Total Diva, the one with the most followers on Instagram out of any woman in this roster, is back now from, from a neck injury? Uh, no, bitch, not on my watch. I'm taking you right the fuck back out. I'm putting you on the shelf because there's one less bitch I need to worry about. And I like that. And I hope that's what they play off with her next week. As for Naomi, Naomi has a lot of ground to cover for what she did this week because, girl, you had the opportunity and you fucking blew it. Fucking blew it. So I feel like Naomi needs redemption. I hope they put her on. You know what, Naomi? You're not making the power ranking this week, girl. Definitely not. And maybe Naomi, they need to put her in a strong point and have her wrestle next week for sure. Put her in a match against Natty like Nick. She's going from like top spots and not even on it. Yeah, it's crazy. That's what I'm saying. She's not consistent. That's my thing with Naomi. Love Naomi. Love the game. Are you kidding me? That That's the best entrance of any woman in this division or anybody has ever had for me. It's visually beautiful. But the personality is just... That's why it's I think lacking. She's not going to get the title, guys. She's definitely not. So I don't want to hear an uproar when she doesn't get the belt. Because she's not going to get it. And she's not ready for it. I'm sorry, she's not. I don't think so. I feel like she'll get that title eventually, but she won't be the first champ. I don't know. I think Naomi has like four more years, maybe. And if she, I don't see it, I I just don't see it. You don't see her holding a title? No, I don't. Not now. I don't see. I don't see it in the future right now. From what she's giving me right now, I don't see it. I want. I want it for her. I really do. listen. Listen. Give her some time though, because like we said earlier, you were a little hesitant when she first transitioned to the heel too. So she's now transitioning back into her baby face role. She has this new gimmick kind of thing. So give her give her a couple more weeks before you write off. I no, I am, but I just I'm just saying I don't see it. I don't I don't I see like you know I love Naomi. There's no shade. I want her to do well. I'm just disappointed in her. Like Naomi, come on. You've been doing this for how long now? Almost six years. You shouldn't. It, it shouldn't be like this. Like this is something I expect from a Mandy Rose, like not knowing what to say on mic, uh, on commentary. You have four people to balance off of, and you wasn't giving me. And JBL is just throwing it at them, throwing all this shade. And I'm like, Naomi, you're sassy. Throw it back at JBL, but she didn't give me nothing, nothing. So that's all I gotta say. I just hope she wrestles next week, so people can be get more behind her again, and sh- so she won't just be a gimmick entrance. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but Sam, do you have any predictions? You want to just move right on to um, Smack Talk? Or talk in Smack? Um, yeah, you can move on to Smack Talk. It's okay. I'm just really tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you, honey. I need to go get something to eat here soon. So we'll um, we'll cover it right now with finish it off with some talk and Smack. Um, let's talk about the Nikki Bella interview on there. So I've seen a little bit of that. I love the chemistry with her and Renee and Brian just because they're all friends. So it was nice to kind of see all of them chatting together. Um, I like how she called Carmella bootleg Nikki Bella. I thought that was <laughs> funny. Um, the, my only complaint in the attack was horrible. I did not like the attack. No, I really did like it. I think it was like really I thought it was effective. interesting. I know. Like, to just come out of nowhere. She, you know, Nikki I, no, don't really get me wrong. Happy. I like... I like the idea of the attack. I just I didn't like how Nikki sold it. It just well, I didn't very... mind. I thought Nikki sold it quite well. It was the best part. It was like not really stupid, but you know, because Renee was like she talked about like Nicole, Nicole, like mm-hmm. not pulling Nikki. It kind of made it seem like it was more real. Can I ask you a question? That's the thing I like about Smack Talk. Mm-hmm. Did you watch it live, or did you hear no. about it first? I I heard about it first. What about you, Nick? Did you hear about it first, or did you watch it live? I heard about I heard about it. See, first. for me, I watched it live, and I didn't expect it, and I thought it was fucking amazing. Because the last thing I expected was for Carmella to come off screen and to beat up Nikki Bella. <laughs> I keep saying that. <laughs> but AJ Styles is just the shit. But he, when she came out there and just slammed Nikki's head on the table, I was just like, oh, shit. Did Nikki Bella do like that? Oh, oh my God. Ow. Yeah, kind of. I see what you mean, Nick. 
when she it was just kind of like oh girl. it was like a, <laughs> but it was oh, fine though oh okay. no she's gonna throw my head on the table oh <laughs> like i i can see that part but and then when she rolled over the table and everything it got a little more dramatic i got into it i was into it i'm sorry yeah. and then renee really played it off for me well renee's like oh my god is she gone what's going on it looks so <laughs> real and then the usos breaking it up and everything oh uh, we lost nick I can't with Canada. Mm. But with the Usos breaking it up and everything, I thought it was pretty cool. It was legit. It was a good spot for Carmella to have. So Yeah. Nick's uh, gone. Yeah, he's definitely gone. I don't know if we're gonna get him back. Let me try. Probably not. Probably not. Oh, we didn't even talk any well nothing happened on NXT. No, NXT was a bit cruddy. Yeah. Uh, oh, he has a message saying, Ugh, my battery died. Uh, well anyways, that's what happened on Smack Talk. And I think we We've said enough. We've covered everything that's happened this week. Anything important that we need to talk about? Oh, another thing I wanted to talk about real quick before we get off air is the whole Daniel Bryan and um, the uh, Miz controversy. Yeah. How did you feel about that, Sam? Did I, see, you watch it live, obviously, so you're going to have a different opinion than yeah. I do, but I felt it was really real. It felt real. It felt Because really like real. when they went to the Miz, like, Miz just seemed... You know, really, really, really pissed off into it. Yeah, like he his eyes were like really tearing up and stuff. I mean, I like know. I like the way that Daniel Bryan because when he came in, he's like, "Listen, you had a showcase for the tag team titles. You're talking about the heavyweight championship, and then you talk, you introduce the women's title." He's like, "But me and you, we fought for this title. This is the title." Blah blah blah. Miz was really passionate for this. Like, yeah, you know, you you promised the fans you'd come back, and you never came back. Yeah, and then when he was just like. Oh, this, that, and the third. Why won't? Why am I getting? And then when Daniel Bryan's like, I respect the belt, but I don't respect you. He's like, I don't like you. I feel like you wrestle like a coward. And that's when I was like, Oh, I was like, Oh no, he didn't. It was the hurl. Yeah. I was like, Oh no, he didn't. And then um, that's when the Miz went off on him, and Miz was like, You promised the fans that you were gonna be back. I don't get injured. I've been here for ten years. I haven't been injured because of the way I wrestle. Unlike you, who promised the fans you'll be back, but and then Daniel Bryan's like, Oh, they won't let me back. They won't let me back. And he's like, Then why would you go to your bingo halls and stop? I was like, Oh shit. I was like, they're really going at it. And I was like, yeah. is this a work? What? But then again, I think it is a work. But Daniel Bryan is so passionate about SmackDown and he really wants to make SmackDown the biggest brand there is. And I feel like they give Daniel Bryan a lot of creative freedom. And I think that's why he came back. And that's why he decided to do this role. Probably he was like, hey, if you guys want me to do this, it got to be my way. You know what yeah. I mean? Do it this way or that way. So I'm happy for it. I'm happy for this direction. I can't wait to see how they're going to interact on SmackDown Live because... Talking Smack blurs the line between kayfabe and real life, and I, I just yeah, because I didn't know it was like like that. You know what I mean, it's just the new way that Daniel see SmackDown is so innovative. They're booking wrestling a whole different other way for us, and it's something new, and it's it, it, it's it's exciting. And this is probably my favorite show on the network right now. It's probably Smack Talking Smack, then WWE Twenty Four. And Breaking Ground. Those are my three favorite shows. And I love it. And I've been dying for a talk show on the on the network. And I'm glad. And Renee does such a great job. It's, it's awesome. Well, we've said enough. We've mm -hmm. said a lot. We've got into it. <laughs> Via Nick definitely got into it on this show. I know. I was just like falling asleep. But then you guys kept waking me up because you were like arguing. <laughs> well, Pelly, where can yeah. the listeners follow you at? You can find me at Sampai underscore on Twitter and Instagram. I'm not very active on either of them at the moment because I'm on like temporary phone, so I can't really set anything up properly. But I'll be back on it soon. And you guys can follow me at Jimmy Vibes underscore on Twitter. And you guys can follow Nick at Prince Pipe Bomb, I believe, some bullshit like that. <laughs> but you guys yeah. can follow us on underscore Real Pipe Bomb for all the true tea throughout the week. If you guys miss us, because we won't be back until next Thursday. Nope. Wah, wah. wah we we'll miss you guys. Wah. And I know a lot of you listeners, you guys want us to do a live show. We talked about this last week. We just need a higher demand. So keep tweeting us. Keep commenting it. Just keep letting us know that's what you guys want. And once we feel like we got a strong enough group of people who want us live, we'll do it. Yeah. That's it. Um, I guess awesome. that's it. Do you have anything else you want to add on, Samuel? No, I'm good, sweetie. I'm so sleepy. All right. Well, toodaloo. You better not be like this when I go there in April, bitch. You better be ready to turn up. Oh, no. When you can party in April, I'm taking the month off work. <laughs> you are? You're taking the whole week off? Yeah, of course I am. Hey!
Yay! Oh, listen, with you. I'm going to the UK in April when WWE does their UK tour after WrestleMania. So mm-hmm. I'm going up there with Sam Pelly. So me and Sam Pelly are going to meet. Yeah, you. And we're going to have... We need to work out where it's going to be, though. I think it's going to be Manchester, my theory. I don't give a fuck where it's going to be. All I know is I'm going to be there. <laughs> it's all going to be new to me, so I don't I don't care. It's just exciting. Either I'm going to, like, take you around everywhere. Manchester or London, right? Is that what you're thinking? The O2? Is that the O2 arena? Yeah, the O2. I would or, love to go to yeah, the O2. Manchester's full anymore. Have you sure the Manchester arena now? Do you keep changing the name of it? I would love it to be in the O2 arena. I kind of want it to be in Manchester because I know it better. Oh, so I can really? show you around. Oh, I'm excited. I don't care. I, I just want to go everywhere. I want to go to London. I want to go to Manchester. I want to go everywhere. Everywhere. Mm-hmm. Even the dark alleys, the sex shops, the, the bathhouses. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take you there. <laughs> oh, you will. <laughs> All right. I, I'll let you use my membership card. <laughs> I don't look like you, bitch. They're going to be like, uh, okay, you must have got a really mean tan. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Pelly. I'll talk to you no later. Worries. Bye. Toodle, guys. Thanks.